Gravity is not a force. Let's just pound this in for you, okay? From Caltech, Einstein came up with the theory of general relativity in 1915, the prototype of all modern gravitational theories. Its crucial ingredient involving a colossal intellectual jump is the concept of gravitation not as a force, but as a manifestation of the curvature of space-time. Brian Cox, there isn't really a force of gravity at all. George Mooser, 2019, see Fat to Fat Earth. Gravity is not a force, but you can think of it as a force. Even the alma mater wiki, gravity is most accurately described by the general theory of relativity proposed by Albert Einstein in 1915, which describes gravity not as a force. And by the way, real scientific theories don't describe, they explain. From the universe today, in general relativity, gravity is not a force between masses. From the University of California, strictly speaking, gravity is not a force. From physics.org, according to this theory, gravity is not a force. From New Scientist, so although the Earth appears to be pulled towards the sun by gravity, there is no such force. From physics Libre text. The answer is that gravitation is what? Not a force between two objects. From the physics hypertext book, gravity isn't a force. Do you get this? So now we got after all this. Wonder Twin powers activate. We got physics for kids and NASA. I think NASA got it from physics for kids be that as it may. So from NASA, gravity, an invisible force that pulls objects toward each other. Anything that has mass also has gravity. Objects with more mass have more gravity. Earth's gravity comes from all its mass. And physics for kids, ducksters.com. Gravity is the mysterious force. It's not just a force now. It's a mysterious force. Booga, booga, booga. That makes everything fall down towards the earth. It falls down, goes boom, boom. Only in Shangri-La, folks, can we base reality on paradoxical contradictions. Comments, questions? Hola. That earlier statement about snapping the wand and, and getting away from an invisible force at a distance. Well, is space-time visible? You know, if, that, if that's the antidote to an invisible, mysterious force, then show me space-time because I can't see it. Uh, FYI, space-time is conceptual. Betty? It, but you can see it. Or you can think of it as real or potentially <laughs> bendable, but it's conceptual. <laughs> Betty? Yeah, I want to see the wizard with these mysterious and mystic forces. I want to see that. Yes, we all want to meet the wizard of Narnia. But yeah, the one behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but space is fake, so alas. Hmm. Adam? Just, just a quick question. So, John, there isn't a mystical force between objects at distance interacting then i don't know i don't know how many citations i just gave you yeah. uh, i'll just 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 think of, i'll just to confirm that wand is definitely snap then there's numerous from various sources not just georgie but um who's citing <laughs> it you know what i mean these are all from credible sources you cited with across the spectrum of the physics world that are all quite categorically stating it is not a force. And guess what we're going to hear tomorrow? The force of gravity. <laughs> There's nothing else. Uh, there, is, there is one comment I've got, actually got, if you don't mind. Can you, can you get back to the quote from the new scientist? It spoke of falling around suns or words to that effect. 
Here we go. Do you want to read it, if you may? Yes. So, although Earth appears to be pulled towards the sun by gravity, there is no such force. So, that was probably the only exception, but that, that actually had the presupposition that we are falling around the light in the sky. See, traversing the sky. Yeah, it's the only one that made any connection uh, to anything outside of it, yes. No worries. just wanted to make that clear to anybody who may hang on to that particular part of it, that that is entirely based on a presupposition that Earth is a sphere, and the sky is a vacuum, and that we are falling. That is the presuppositional sphere Earth is falling around the light that we see traversing above our head. I want to make a correction. I said tomorrow we're going to hear force... It, we're not. It, it's not going to make it till tomorrow. It's going to make it to the uh, when we go to Discord. <laughs> well, that's a nice segue. So there is a link below this video if you do want to join. I think there is some gaps still left on the Discord panel. I haven't. I can't see it in the tiny little OBS box. But yes, I believe there are some gaps left. If you did want to join and ask some questions, we will open this up to the public towards the end of the presentation. So just FYI. Do you want to continue, John? Yeah, that's real. Europe. So the Reverend Michelle, John Michelle, Cavendish, CV boys, and Weird Al's gravity are not the same. Number one, scientific theories never, ever, ever explain laws. You tossers. Newtonian gravity and Einstein gravity are mutually exclusive. Listen, um... If scientific theory, if a scientific theory explained the law, then let that law wouldn't be a law anymore. Okay? And since you guys are all on, I've heard so many people say this. But listen, I want to I want to hear it, it, or see or post a citation of the theory of the laws of thermodynamics. Can I see that? Because that's ex essentially by analogy what you're what you're saying here. It's quite preposterous. Number two, Newtonian gravity is a force. Remember this from above? Einsteinian gravity is not a force. Number three, Newtonian, the law of superposition applies. Einsteinian, the law of superposition doesn't apply. Number four, they're not even in the same geometry, for crying out loud. Newtonian gravity is Euclidean three space, whereas Einsteinian gravity is pseudo-Ramonian four space. Newtonian gravity is instantaneous actions at a distance. Einsteinian gravity is limited to the speed of light. Listen, drunken sailors and field goal posts have more in common than Newton's and Einstein's fairy tales. Just to let you know, I'm still using Newton. That's just for everyone so everyone can identify what we're talking about here. We're going to slowly transition over to CV boys over the next few months. So why on earth are you still appealing to Newtonian Cavendish CV boys, John Michelle gravity? All that these crayon munch and weak are doing is taking an effect. Things fall to the ground at 9.81 meters per second, which is bullshit. Like I said before, and then conclude by mere declaration. Gravity is the cause. It's a non sequitur fallacy on its face. They use this value, again, 9.81 meters per second squared, which is bullshit, and put it into their fairy tale descriptive equations and say it works. Then they say, wah, gravity exists. The attribution or cause of this effect has not been identified isolated. That is scientifically validated. So every time you say gravity, whether you like it or not, as soon as you say or post gravity, you immediately invoke a cause, either mass attracting mass or space time, right? So you need a new word. I got one, Ducal Slopelgertz. Clowns. So mass attracting mass, the hypothesis in this one cracks me up. We hear, how many times have we heard this? Well, we, they don't say it. We have to get them. We have to hold them by the hand and they finally get to it. If mass, that's the hypothesis. There's our hypothesis. If mass, then mass attracts mass. That's what it is. It's so hilarious right on its face. I mean, it's a Mr. Magoo circle jerk of the millennium. 
Independent variable mass. Dependent variable mass attracts mass. Yeah, nice. Kites is This is your actual hypothesis. If gravity exists, then larger masses will attract smaller masses. Even though you can't define mass, we're going to get to that here in a few minutes. This is an affirming the consequent formal logical fallacy on its face. If P, then Q, Q, therefore P. Have a nice day. P, ace, you'd fail fifth grade general science. Let's stop right there.